I see I've got just over 12 minutes left, folks. So let me wrap up with a question that is an application. These are usually very, very, not necessarily difficult, but tricky questions that comes up in the calculus section of your paper. Okay, so I'm going to look at the graph that I've got here. The graph goes as follows. We've got an x-axis, we've got a y-axis drawn. On that graph, we have this. This is what they give us. They tell us that the function that we're looking at is y equals x squared plus 2, where x is positive. Now, when I saw this graph in the initial, I thought, why did they not give me the y-intercept? And then I saw that we have the function. So we have the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the constant in the equation, which is 2. Now, remember, you'll see this is not drawn to scale at all. Then somewhere here, on my y-axis, they give us a point. And they say that is the point B, and the coordinates of B is 0 and 3. Now, the context of this graph. This graph represents a motor car that's traveling along the function. An observer is at point B over here. He's observing a car traveling. Now, let's just say the car is over there at the point Okay, at the point where he observes it, it's there. Let me just move the diagram up. I just realized that you guys cannot see all of this. That's better. There's the B. Okay, so now they're asking us to find um, the closest distance that these two are apart from each other. So here's the vehicle, the car. Here's the observer. They want, when he, obse he observes the car, when the car is the closest um, to him on that trajectory. Now, we, we need to form a problem here. So we start and we put the variable point. Remember, C is the car that's moving. So we put the variable point on that path, and we need to work with variable coordinates. Now, folks... Remember what this is. This is an x, y coordinate. x is independent. y is dependent on x. Do we have y in terms of x? And yes, we do. There it is. So we're going to work with the coordinates of c as the coordinate pair x and x squared plus 2. And the coordinates of b is fixed. And that's the distance. We want this distance to be a minimum. So the question is, he observes the car when the car is closest to him. Okay? How far is the car away from him? Now, it's not to say that that is going to be the point. The point can be somewhere down here. I don't know. But we introduce it deliberately in variable form. Now, remember this relationship. If you have the equation of a graph, you have the relationship between the x and the y coordinates on that graph. And this is what we're working with. We're working with that relationship. Okay, so we need to find an expression for that distance bc. I'm going to square it for now so that we don't get stuck with a square root and get intimidated by that square root. Okay, so bc squared distance formula is x minus naught, which is x squared, plus this x value here is x squared plus 2 minus the x, uh, the, the, sorry, the y value there, minus that y value, all squared. Now, please don't be intimidated by these powers, folks. They only represent um, the distance that these two, the body and the car, are apart from each other. So x squared plus 2 minus 3 turns beautifully into x squared minus 1, all squared. And now we've got a square. So x squared plus x to the 4 
minus 2x squared plus 1. Okay, we can clean it up. We can combine those two terms. So we have x to the 4 minus x squared plus 1. And that is the representation of that distance squared. Now I'm keeping it squared because I absolutely don't have to work with the square or the square root. I work with what's underneath that square root. So if I had the square here, the square root, it would have been BC is the root of x to the 4 minus x squared plus 1. Okay, the point here is I do not need the root. I need to optimize what's underneath that root. And then finally, when I find what this actual distance is, then I bring the root back. Okay, so let's focus on optimizing this length over there. Okay, so what do I do if I optimize that? I differentiate it with respect to x. So I'm going to differentiate four, uh, x to the 4 minus x squared plus 1. And that result is going to be equal to naught. Why do we make it equal to naught again in calculus? Remember, a derivative is naught where the tangent is horizontal. Okay, because the gradient there is horizontal. Tangents on graphs are usually horizontal at local maxima or local minimum points. Okay, so if I optimize it, I'm looking for a zero gradient on the graph of x to the 4 minus x squared plus 1. That's where the optimum lies. Okay, so let's continue. If I differentiate that, I get 4x to the 3 minus 2x. The derivative of the constant is 0. That is equal to naught. Okay, now remember, I'm now I'm after that x value that makes that naught. Okay, x cannot, can it be naught? Well, let's see. If I divide the 2 away and I remove an x as a common factor, I'm left with x squared minus 1. Remember what happened? Let me do that slowly. That cancelled. I divided everything by 2. Um, the x was out. I thought I'm going to leave that 2 out. So here we have 2x squared minus 1. Okay. So, now, let's see, if I go up here, I have x times x minus 1, x plus 1, which is naught. So, I'm only looking for positive x's because the initial question said I'm only working with x values that are bigger than naught. Now, that is key here. x cannot equal naught. And x can also not um, equal the uh, a negative answer. So I'm going to ditch this answer and that one. And again, look at what I did. I left the 2 behind. So we have a root 2 there and a root 2 here. Let me just fix that one. It looks silly. Okay, so that's the difference of two squares over there. If I find the factors of the difference of those two squares, I get x root 2x minus 1, and root 2x plus 1, which is naught. Okay, x, we discount it, can't be naught, and this one we're going to throw away, because if we solve it equal to naught, it becomes x is minus 1 over root 2, and we're not allowing for negatives. So what is x? x is finally 1 over the square root of 2, and that is because x is only positive. Are we finished? No, we're not. The question says, what is this minimum distance? Okay, so now my minimum distance is the square root of this thing to the power of 4 minus the same thing squared. And I think it was a plus 1 under the root. Yes, it's a plus 1. Okay, so now let's see what we have. If we raise 1 over root 2 to the power of a 4, we have a quarter. Okay, so here we get a quarter minus 1 over root 2 squared, 
gives us a half plus that one, and that leaves me with three over four inside of that root. Now, folks, that is the distance that they are apart. Now, here you must read your question carefully. If they say, give the answer correct to two decimal places, then we're going to calculate that answer. If they say, leave the answer in simplest third form, all you need to do is you need to take the square root of 4. So that's root 3 over 2, and the, the, um, the units they gave us was kilometers. So BC is that amount of kilometers, so therefore the car, always answer the question, the car is root 3 over 2 kilometers away from the observer at point B. Okay, that was a calculus question. Now, what was intimidating here in this particular question, folks, is the fact that you had to work with a distance formula. The distance formula has a square root over it, okay? And that square root does not matter when I'm trying to find x. They've asked this question many times in the past, and people leave it out because they think, oh, but I can't differentiate over the square root. I can't do that. You only work with what's underneath that square root. We could have completed the square if we wanted to. Okay, there's many ways to answer this question. But remember, at the point where you're finding x, I worked with the bc squared so that I can avoid that actual root. Once I had the answer, I plugged it back into bc, and that gave me the, the distance that these two bodies, the car and the person, are apart from each other. Okay, folks, that concludes our show for today. Your first paper is usually the paper where you should get better marks in because it is based on algebra. There's a little bit of probability in the paper. Most of the first paper is algebra. So please make sure that you know your algebra, you know your processes involved in the first paper. Okay, folks, a big shout out to Liberty. We want to thank them for their sponsorship of the show. Without their money, this show would not have been possible. So Liberty, thank you for sponsoring the work that we're doing here at Tenfold. Okay, folks, until I see you next week, work hard, go and do some additional mathematics. Bye-bye for now.